good day to be doing this out on the streets. There are people who asked all kinds of questions. I've had people on the videos that we've produced already where they were asking some unusual questions. Somebody asked all about the moon. Why are there craters on the moon? And I said that's because the moon has been hit by meteors. But why would I be too concerned about outer space? What's really important is inner space and what's happening on the inside. You see, that's very important. And if, uh, am I right? You're from the Czech Republic? Uh, Poland. Poland. I have something for anyone who happens to be Polish today. Do you have one of those? Yeah. You can have it for free. No, I have Well, no. if you don't want, that's fine. Do you read it? Yeah. It's very important to not just have one, but to read it, gathering dust sometimes on the shelf. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm, because a lot of people, that's all they did. They just have it on the shelf, never actually reading it. And certainly they never put into practice what they read. Because you know what happens if you just read something and then don't apply it? It's like somebody who looks in the mirror and says, oh, what's this? I have spaghetti on my face. Oh, that's from lunch. <laughs> but they say, okay, and they don't go and wash it off. So why would, what's the benefit of the mirror? And this word is like a mirror. Oh, you got, oh, Germans. Was machen Sie? Austria. Oh, Australian. <laughs> How is it going, mate? That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> yes, from Austria. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sprechen Sie Englisch? Do you speak English? Yeah. Good English? No. It's not the yellow from the egg, you know. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Sehr gut. Uh, we're doing a, an interview with people. If you want to do, you can hide the microphone. Yeah. Here. Now. You can try it. Let's see how good your English really is. You can stand back a little bit. Stand back a bit. And you'll have to pull your socks up, actually. Now. They're not long. <laughs> oh. it's, just, it's a saying in English. Have you heard it before? No. You need to pull your socks up. It means, say you were at school and the teacher says, you didn't do your homework. You need to pull your socks up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So his are mm, much better. Okay. Now, can you read what is written in each of those three Triangles, one at a time. Go ahead. Uh, Paris in the spring. In, in next. In the, the spring. Oh, you have a stutter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next one. Bird in the the hand. Very good. Once in a lifetime. Once in uh, uh. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. <laughs> now, you see, the re I I proved this many times. If you're a natural English speaker, you'll get it wrong. Okay, if you're non-natural English and you spoke, let's say your native tongue is German in this case, and Lederhosen, I guess, <laughs> yes, that would be the reason why you got it right. But how about mathematics? And you can try it. Pass the mic there. Oh, no. <laughs> you're good at mathematics? Hey there. Yeah, you know? it's okay, I guess. Uh, it's okay, okay. Try to answer this one. Should I just answer it or read yes, it? Yes, uh, you can read it and answer it. Meanwhile, you can be thinking what the answer is, okay? But okay. don't shout out your answers all at once. <laughs> now, when you're ready, give me an answer. 3,110. Oh. Wow, that's an interesting answer. Maybe you want to pass the mic to him. What are Andy. your names, by the way? Don't tell me Hansen. Han it's Andy. Handy? Andy. Andy. Andy and? Matteo. Matteo. Very good. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you French? It says Paris. I just wondered. <laughs> well, if you want to answer these questions, now they they got that one 100% right. But I, if you're English speakers, are you natural English speakers? Okay. Let them answer this question. What's your answer to that one, by the way? Wait. <laughs> Yeah? Answer? I will say that you were wrong, by the way, but you weren't far off it. Yeah, okay? I know. Okay. Now, have you got an answer, um, uh, Matteo? Because um, I want to give this girls an opportunity. Do you want to answer the question? With... 
Why? What's what's your what's answer to that one? To? Oh, give them the. Can you can you take the microphone and do that? I want to. We have I'd to also get, say four thousand. Okay, so come come as a group together. Come here as a group, okay? Come here as a group. Now, I'm, I'd love to know where and earth you got the four. He said three thousand one hundred and ten. You're saying four thousand? How come? Because I added all the thousands. Yeah. And then I added the forty, the ten, and the forty, and the ten again. And you still got it wrong. Huh? What? You thought you were right? Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was right. You thought you're right. And a lot of people, I've had two math, no, one mathematician from IT Trilly who, he got it wrong, so don't feel bad. Two accountants who told me that they were right when they were wrong. Two accountants. And they all said 4,000. So, yeah, there you go, 3,100. So, the most common wrong answer is 4,000. I was close. Well, by 900. Oh, <laughs> I mean, do you call that close? Oh, wait, go, on, go into the bank. Ooh, next to 900. Okay, here's a good question. I like this one. Can anyone answer this one? And don't shout the answer out, okay? But if you have the answer, it says finished files of the results of years of scientific study combined with the experience of years. Right, does it say it? Now it says, count how many times the letter F appears and don't shut out your answer, but just pass the mic along the road there if you want. Answer? Answer? Pass the mic if you don't know. Answer? Pass the mic if you don't know. Answer? Pass the mic if you don't know. Come on. Come on. What's the answer? Three. Three. Well, hey. Congratulations. That's what most people say. So obviously, the average person says three. But if I was to tell you that there are six, would you be surprised? You should be surprised. That the, you probably didn't see that one and that one and that one. Am I right? Am I right? Well, seeing that... Now... I think we've covered most of the there are there's a few more but we don't have to waste our time doing this one because that's too complicated anyway you did mention she mentioned god there did you are you religious are you religious yeah okay well yeah the reason why i asked that is because i'm using this as my platform i'm on stage today you see i'm using this as a platform to share the gospel with people so if you said you're religious, we could ask, we could have a bit of fun asking questions along those lines, if you're up to it. But you'll have to pass the mic to her. You still haven't got an answer to this. It was six. Okay. <laughs> just in case you. Okay. Now you can come a little closer. I just want to ask you a couple of questions to see how you get. You said you're religious, right? I don't go to mass a lot, Luke. Well, that's okay. Not mass isn't the main thing. Okay. Some people don't even know what it is. Question is number one: Is there a God? Yeah. Okay. Which one? Jesus. Okay. Fair enough. The one of the one of the Bible, maybe. Okay. Second question: Do you have a soul? Yeah. Yeah. Your life. Okay. Third question: Is this? What do you think happens to people when they die? Their soul rises to heaven. Okay. So let's say you said. People, when they die, go to heaven. A guy comes up here right now with a machine gun, kills a whole lot of people and says, God, the hell with a lot of you. And then he gets shot by the police and he goes straight to heaven? No, he goes to heaven. Well, you, wait a minute. Wait, hey, hey, hold. Did you not just say people, when they die, go to heaven? Are you changing it for this man? Yeah, because he did something wrong. But don't, don't we all? Yeah. Okay, so he's a mass murderer, right? What about... How do we know how good? How do you think you're? How do you think you're doing? Are you good? Yeah. Compared to that guy, maybe. Oh yeah. But how about if you were to check your? Now you know, like, have you heard this saying? Okay, bad breath is easier to detect in other people than in yourself. How do you? How do you know? How How would you know whether you are the one with the problem? Because okay? you're the person that smells it. You, you, they, are they are they going to tell you? Uh, no. By the way, I'm a best, I'm your best friend, but I have to tell you this. She would. She probably would. Yeah, if she's your best friend. But look, have you ever heard? You're, you said you're religious, right? Jesus said these words. Okay, he said, 
before you go and look at the little speck in someone else's eye and says you've got a speck of dirt in your eye take the log out of your own eye right in other words he was using hyperbole he's saying look at your own problems first right you got a log in your eye and you're trying to find fault with somebody else you might think that you're a good person a lot of people do okay but how do we compare ourselves or what do we do to compare ourselves or how do we measure ourselves like for example god gave us the ten commandments didn't he it says things like you shall not lie you shall not steal you shall not murder honor your mother and father if i was to go through that list how do you think you'd be doing it? good you think you've never lied yeah. tell the truth no well here's something that you might not be aware of the bible even says this all liars shall have their place in the lake of fire now if you think oh lying's not a big deal the bible says god never lies and that he considers lying so wrong that that's what it says all liars shall have their place in the lake of fire what about murderers what about thieves have you ever stolen something before you wouldn't say it public and on camera no course, but... i actually haven't but, that, but you're a liar aren't you i never stole anything you said yes to that. Oh, when did i say yes did you not say you're you've told lies yeah well no so how many lies do you have to tell to be to be called a liar <laughs> <laughs> just tell the truth like has okay, she stolen Emily. anything before I, I stole things when i was a kid okay and we might not think she stole my fiddle well put it like this all i'm saying is that if we were to go by those standards not one of us would pass the test it's like at school you go to school i guess still do you yeah That's right do you do exams don't they have pass marks what if the pass mark is 40 percent? that's pretty low right yeah mm. i know these guys are germans they're probably getting scores like 80 90 right <laughs> up in the high yeah right but I wasn't very good at school but what if the pass mark was a hundred percent for every exam who would who would pass not me okay and that's why god's standards are what do you think perfection no yeah then he say like something like everyone's not perfect the perfect one is a born yet or something like that well not i read the bible a lot and i know it doesn't say that but in your own words it could say something along the hey, look we're all fallen yeah. that's true but how about these words from the new testament okay unless your goodness is greater than the most religious people you're never going to enter the kingdom of god ever now that would mean that not one of us would ever enter so where does that leave us kind of snookered doesn't it okay you know what that means by snookered when the ball's in the awkward position you can't read right okay now here's the good news you want some good news we're all we'd all be doomed if it was going but if if we were judged by god's law because we're not going to be facing judge judy you know who that is yeah american judge right we're not ju facing judge judy when we die it's going to be the judge who's perfect and holy in all his ways okay now here's the good news god himself came into this world and lived as a man through the virgin birth he then lived this perfect life on this earth okay and took our place by dying in our place taking the punishment that we deserve so that we could be forgiven and receive heaven as god's gift to us now, i probably didn't you weren't expecting to talk about all of this stuff but you brought it up hmm? you brought it up you said you were you said oh god so i thought you were religious so <laughs> okay you want to hand the microphone back to these guys okay i hope you receive what i had to say okay <laughs> now good guys um would you consider yourself to be good people Big what? a good person yeah most do you, of the time do you, do you think you're christians <laughs> yeah are you christians yes as in have you been born again what have you been born again what do you know what the bible speak, speaks about in johan chapter three Johan 3. You know what it says? No. <laughs> About the religious man called Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night and he said, We know. Said to Jesus, We know that you are sent from God because no one could do the miracles that you're doing unless God was with him. 
And Jesus didn't really entertain what he had to say. He just said this. Unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. Okay? So I'm asking you, do you think that you have been born again? When you say Christian, what do you mean? Believing in God and Jesus. Okay. There are many people who do believe that. Did you know? I'll let you into a secret, okay? The Bible says that the devil also believes in God. Right? Yeah. He knows there's a God. He knows there's a Jesus. He even believes every word of the Bible. Okay? Where's he headed for? Where's he, going? where's he where's he going to? Where's he his final destination? Well, hell. Yes. So why should you you are you believe in God? You believe in Jesus? Is that all that's required? Is that all that you need to do? Just say I, I don't think, think so. Okay. So when you say you're a Christian, what exactly do you mean? That's all I'm asking. Maybe you're saying I was raised in a Christian home. Yeah. Yeah. That's what most people mean. Yeah. But they may not have personally experienced it. I, I mean, if I were was to wear leather hosen, would that make me German? No. no. <laughs> if I go to McDonald's and need to make Big Mac, does that make me American? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, it doesn't. If I park my, if I stay, if I live in a garage, does that make me a car? No. <laughs> does going to church make you a Christian? No. No. Because as we've heard from these girls here, they knew some answers to some questions. They don't really have too many because they didn't really think these things through. But the fact of the matter is that one day, okay, each one of us. Now you're young lads. Are you about 18? Yeah. 17. Yes, 17, 18. I was 17 years of age when I actually became a Christian. Okay. Now that might be strange to some people, yeah. especially in Ireland, because I had a woman, I was on a course one time and I happened to mention, I only mentioned the words, oh, I became a Christian when I was 17. Years. This woman nearly at the head off me. She said, what do you mean you became a Christian? We're all Christians. And I said to her, <laughs> We're all Christians? Really? What about Muslims? Are they Christians? Oh, well, no, 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 not Muslims. Well, what about Hindus? Well, no, no, not Hindus. Okay. What about rapists, murderers? Well, no, they're not. No. Okay. <laughs> I said, so who is? And she said, well, someone who doesn't do any harm to anyone else, uh, goes to mass, as we've heard there. Uh, and she couldn't really think of anything more. And I said to her, that's interesting that it doesn't even involve Jesus Christ. Surely it must. And I had to explain to her why I am a Christian, because I put my trust in Jesus Christ. Not just say, I believe in him. I've explained this before, you know, and I don't want to take up all your day because you're a tourist, you're traveling around and everything, right? But let's say, for example, the story of the tight rope walker uh, who's called Blondin. Do you understand me? Tight rope walker. Very thin line across the river. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And he's walking. He can walk backwards, forwards. He can turn around. He can stand on one leg. He can do many things. Okay? But he said, how many of you people, there were a big crowd, how many of you people believe that I could carry someone on my back. And you know what? They put their hands. Can I see your hand? You believe I can carry someone on my back. Every hand went up. Okay. Okay. Then he said, okay. So who will be first? <laughs> they all very quickly. They hid. Why is that? Because it's one thing, thing saying we believe it, but we're not willing to believe it that far that yeah, much yeah. okay and you, you understand why yeah but why <laughs> what do we mean like they believe it but i don't really believe it you understand mm -hmm. so that's what i'm trying to get across is we need to say if we believe something we're saying i can i place all my trust in what jesus christ did for me he lived for me and he died for me okay when he died on the cross he was taking our sin upon himself and he was giving us his life and saying, now with my life, 
you can stand before God without your own good deeds, but in the goodness of Jesus Christ. You understand? That's all I have to say. I'm just sharing that with you so you can think about it, okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay thank you, uh, Mateo and uh, Andy. Yeah. Okay, that's handy.